All right, let's take a look at the power management piece. Landis has done a lot of work on power management. They've had it for, for quite some time, but they've added several features in this version uh, to make your life a, a lot easier. So we can set a power management schema up to deliver uh, the power management schema to the machines. And again, we can have as many as we want. We can set different things when we want them to go to standby, turn them on or turn them off. Um, and based on what we select in the action menu will give us different items over here uh, and then I noticed that when I said turn off we select computers and we got hard shutdown we also have a soft shutdown so soft shutdown would be if they have programs open go ahead and attempt to uh, shut those programs down then go ahead and shut the machine down or the hard would be just like pulling a plug on it just go ahead and shut it down so a lot of companies have this same thing and you can do this with a lot of the built-in products so with Landisk it has process sensitive triggers so if you have a developer that's running a program in the middle of the night we can add that in here where if it sees it running it's not going to do anything on the other side of the coin we can do the same thing it's Friday afternoon and everybody's taken off and left all this stuff up on their machine so now it's gonna go ahead and tell it to end these programs and then go ahead and shut the machines down we can monitor the CPU usage we've got power buttons so we can tell it you know when you close the lid of your laptop do this or you know if you're on a battery do that we got the nice options there we can also use the CPU adaptive throttling to help conserve the battery when the machines are plugged in and these can be pushed out just like a software distribution we can go ahead and tell it to schedule a power policy again that jumps us over to our scheduled task and we can send it out to one particular machine or a group of machines let's take a look at operating system deployment so you want to go ahead and deploy images to machines Landisk has two features the typical OS deployment where you can capture an image and you can deploy an image to a machine and they've got provisioning which gives you uh, much more capabilities of doing a complete uh, life cycle cradle to grave imaging process uh, we can use WinPE or we can use Linux PE or we can even use DOS if we want to so we'll take a quick look at this deployment image So we've got some diff different methods here. We can use target and multicast like we talked about in software distribution. We can do a classic download. We can use pure downloads, uh, preferred server downloads. So if you've got remote locations and you've got servers in those locations, so they can be all tied in uh, with Landesk. And when a distribution job takes place, whether it's imaging or software distribution or patching, the local devices will look at, at the preferred server list then grab the machine that's usually closest to them and go ahead and draw the software from that machine rather than all the way across town or uh, to your home office. We can also tell it if we want to use uh, sysprep. We can also do hardware independent imaging. And we'll check that box there and we'll go through some of that information. Uh, here's our multicast stuff that's grayed out because we did not select multicast. The image type, what imaging utility we want to use and we selected that where we want to grab the image from any pre-boot commands we can throw in there and then we get into the sysprep options where we can tell it uh, it's Windows XP if we already have a sysprep file available we can say use that file we can do different things like what time zone it's in add a volume license key add administrator accounts uh, network credentials added to a domain hardware independent imaging we talked about that so we could tell it to auto detect or maybe we know for sure that this is going to an HP machine this particular model we can say there it is go ahead and uh, use those particular drivers for that we can tell it to install the land disk agent uh, and put the information in there and we can go ahead and send that out so I talked about <clears throat> hardware independent imaging so you can do that easily we just go through our little wizard here and we add the drivers for all of the devices that we have and then when we're in that previous screen about 
what to use, we can tell it, you know, use plug and play, and it'll try to pull the drivers off of the um, off the library, or we can specifically tell it what to use. So we could essentially build a image on an HP machine and push it to a Lenovo machine, and with hardware independent imaging, it will grab the proper drivers for it. So that's how we go ahead and get images on the machine. So now we want to take that to the next step, and we want to go ahead and maybe do some software distribution with that, you know, get the complete system set up for it so that we don't have one giant image. We've got uh, operating system images, and then we've got templates for different areas, accounting, for engineering, and so on. So with provisioning, we can do that. We can do some things for the system migration. Before we even start, we can go ahead and tell it, maybe we need to back up some files. So we can certainly say back those files up. Maybe we want to do some more prep on the hard drive before we do anything, like delete the temporary folder. Now we want to go ahead and install the operating system. We want to go ahead and tell it to you know, wait for the drivers to load, map a drive to where the image is at, uh, deploy the image, you know, and mount the C drive or partition if we need to. And then the post configuration is we're going to go ahead and tell it to use the sysprep file uh, configure the OS and then reboot it. So now the machine has been re-imaged and it's got that nice fresh clean image on it but yet we still need to add some software to it so that uh, Mary can come in and go to work the next morning. So you can do that. You can go ahead and select system configuration and then you can select uh, add software or if we wanted to do something else then we could go ahead and open this up and we've got all these different options available to us in this particular case. You know, we could tell it to join the domain. We could tell it to, you know, unzip a file. Whatever you need to do, you can do it all in provisioning so that Mary calls up and says, my machine is acting up, and your technician says, yes, we need to rebuild it. So you could run this overnight, and when Mary comes in the next morning, her machine is up and working properly with all her applications on it. Let's jump over to the software license monitoring piece. So so, <clears throat> software license monitoring is collected when the inventory scan runs on the machine and you can go ahead and monitor the software if you want to. You'd select the discovered and that would take us over to the titles of the manufacturers and we could drill through there and we could select uh, what we want to. You've got an example down here of the software that's already discovered. You've got the launches and minutes used. So it'll go ahead and tell you, you know, how many times a particular software has been uh, launched and how many minutes has been used. We can take a look at the different computers. Again, you know, here's all the software that's installed. It'll go ahead and tell you whether it's a standalone or part of a suite or a complete suite. And then we get into the licensing area, and here's where you can set it up to monitor your licenses, where you could see if you're in compliance. And in this case, this one machine is out of compliance because we have more installations than we have licenses bought. So then you can go ahead and confirm that those seven installations are correct, uh, buy another license or two, or you can say no, that those... Uh, we're not properly licensed and you can uninstall the software and maintain your compliance. Lastly, we're going to take a look at reports. Reporting is a great tool. They've got a lot of built-in reports in here already. Um, benefit analysis, distribution status for software distributions, inventory. Take a quick look at the bio summary. And it'll give you a list of all the BIOS information in here. You can also customize these. You can change the logo at the top to your company logo. You can create your own reports. These reports can also be created from queries that you built. So lastly, let's take a look at software license monitoring. So we're going to take a look at the installed but not used product.
it'll you'll open it up and then you can say whether you want to view the top 10 or or whatever you like you can certainly change that it's going to go ahead and generate the report and it'll show you the list of the uh, the top 10 softwares that uh, installed but not used so you could again take a look at this and say well, we've got Adobe Reader X you know that costs us money you know got five licenses nobody's being used so let's uh, either redeploy those or, or remove those unused software products we'll take a look at this one so here we can go ahead and select all of the products uh, that we want and these are all the ones that are being monitored in this case I'm just gonna go ahead and say yeah let's go ahead and take a look at all of them so it tells you uh, the total licenses that you have and how many that are unused so you can put in the cost of the software and then it'll show you a total savings so if we uh, didn't buy uh, eight uh, licenses of iTunes then we could save you know two hundred and thirty nine dollars so that's the overview of the land disk management suite uh, appreciate your time and thank you and have a nice day